Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Terry. And welcome back to the Forest Farm Project. Today we are going to show you how we build a top cabinet box. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, to start off, we get all of our pieces for each cabinet rough sized, close to the final dimension, and then we want to final cut everything all at once for that cabinet or multiple cabinets that are going to be the same size so that everything will be a nice flush finish on the final product. Let me show you why. If you saw our earlier video, this is our miniature cabinet again. It's our top cabinet prototype just to, so we can get a rough feel for our face frame. As you can see, when you final cut everything at the same time, you get a nice flush finish between all these boards, which will allow your face frame to sit on here perfectly so that you don't have any big gaps. It's a lot easier to do a final product that looks nice that way. So if you don't cut everything at once, you run the risk of having one board slightly higher than the other with that final cut. And if these are not identical in thickness, you run the chance of running into some wonkiness and you'll start cutting a little here, a little there to make everything end up being the same size and you're gonna end up cutting your cabinet down smaller than you want and may end up having to scrap the whole piece. So by cutting each cabinet all at once, you're gonna guarantee as much as possible that you've got a uniform finish across the front. Okay guys, a couple of things uh, to kind of think about when you go to cutting your lumber down to its final dimension. As Brian had mentioned, you want everything the same width when you build that cabinet. And we, we do them 11, and a quarter deep and then you put your three-quarter face frame that gives you a 12 inch cabinet well if like he said if it's all wonky and you got to start trimming other boards to try and get them all the same thickness pretty soon you're less than 12 and your other cabinets are 12 you're gonna have a mess so you got to get those things even so the first thing we do is we pick a board up and we're gonna cut the longer dimensions first and then the shorter dimensions and when we do that we pull this level over here and we check the edge and you can see did I do a good job cutting this or is a factory edge good enough to use to get closer? We usually, this thing is uh, what, about 12 inches? Uh, you know, that's 11, oh, that's 12 inches. Yeah. This is about 12 inches wide and we, we rip that out of the four by eight sheet of plywood. Then we come back and we'll rip a little bit off of one edge at uh, say 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters, somewhere in there. And then we'll go to the other edge on all of them and rip to that final 11 and a quarter and by that time you should have some good parallel edges and that's what you want so first we're checking for a straight and making sure that the board is cut straight and we'll check each one of these before we uh, go and cut them and I've already checked both sides are really good on this so you run it through you cut one side and these sides could be off they might not be perfectly parallel we might have used our uh, uh, circular saw and a, a saw guide to make one of these cuts uh, I can't remember what how we got to this this board here but anyway if we did it could be off just a little bit well you want them square you want your cabinet square you don't want to lean in you know sideways and stuff so when you make sure your edges are straight and when you cut the first side against that fence on this table saw that creates a straight cut now parallel with this edge because it's right in that board and the saw blades should be parallel to the uh, fence over there so you have created a parallelogram at that point. And then you want to get these ends uh, 90 degrees out and there's no guarantee. They could be like that and they might be parallel with each other but they might be angled one way or the other. Not that much, you, you'd be able to see that but you know a little bit off one way or the other and you don't want that either. Your cabinet's going to be leaning in or out and could be a mess. So first we've cut these edges here parallel through cutting there on there and, and we got them all the way down to the 11 and quarter inches. Then we're gonna turn them sideways, and we're gonna use this miter, and I can't really get it in here good, but we're gonna trim, move the miter over here. We're gonna trim one edge off just a little bit, and then when we flip that board around, we measure our final dimension, we trim the other edge off, they should be parallel and perpendicular to these. So we should have a good square board if everything's going right. You gotta make sure that's square. We need a nice sled, and that would make it so much easier because you could get more repeatable cuts this is the one area where you really are going to have a chance of human error because we have to measure each board to length and then cut it. So that's where the human error comes in. 
Well, let's rip these things down to their final size and get this cabinet built. All right, we got our pieces cut to final dimension. Now is when you want to do a dry fit. Just make sure everything looks good, and you want to make sure what side of each board you want to be your front and your back. Uh, really comes into play if you have, it, have any chip out. We had a little bit of chip out on this one side, and when you have that, it's easy to hide because when you put your face frame on, you're never going to stick your head in the cabinet and look back forward. So if you have any chip out, you want to hide that towards the front, and your face frame will cover it up nicely. You'll never see it. won't be a problem. All right, we're happy with the way things look, the way it's laying out. So now it's time to hit the Craig K5 and do some pocket holing. The way we pocket hole it together is we do three pocket holes on the bottom left and right and on the top left and right and screw those into the outer sideboards and we're good to go. Okay guys, for starters, when you go to run your screws in, I can't tell you exactly what setting to use because every drill is different. Every drill has a different torque spec, different speed. You're just going to have to get a feel for it. So you might be best off getting a couple of scrap pieces of wood that, you, that are identical to what you're using and drill some holes, screw them together and see how they work. Because you can overrun this screw and pop out the side and you don't want to have to come back and putty, putty a bunch of holes. So take your time, learn how it works your drill and screw combination reacts with the lumber you're using. As you can see we've already got ours clamped up here for the first board. We use the Craig Automax clamp that goes into the pocket hole and holds it in place. Works really well but we're always overkill so we throw a bar clamp on it. Really helps solidify everything and lock it down while we're screwing it down. Additionally we've realized that when screwing these down when you tighten it up it tends to pull the board in just a hair so we always set the board that we're screwing through just a hair proud of the surface that we're going flush against and when we do that when it pulls it up it pulls it in to where it's flush again when you do your practice boards try that out and you can see how it sets varying depths and how it's going to pull it in one big thing to check before you start assembling your product is make sure your assembly table is clean so that your face is going to be flush all the way around. If there's a little bit of dust or debris on the table, it's going to set that board proud and it's going to throw your whole product off. So make sure everything's clean before you start screwing things together. Let's get to it. All right, repeat this process for the other side and then we'll start the bottom. Okay guys, as mentioned in an earlier video, we need an inch and an eighth space under the bottom shelf of the top cabinet so that we have room for our under cabinet light and it will help give us proper reveal with our two inch face frame on the inside of the cabinet. So in order to help expedite this process and eliminate human error as much as possible, we ripped an eight, inch and an eighth stock and we've clamped that to the bottom of the cabinet. Then we'll pull our bottom of the top cabinet down to it. We'll clamp them together, make sure our faces are flush still, and now we've got our proper inch and an eight gap spaced. We can do that for both sides and it'll be uniform and look great. Let's get to it. As you guys can see, we are a little overkill when it comes to clamping things in place. We like to make sure they stay where we want them to be.
If you guys notice, the drill goes when it goes that's when the screw is getting tight. So you can learn to listen for different sounds that the screw is making and that's when it pulls up on our drill. So works really well. Let's repeat the process on the other side and then we will put in our stretchers. Okay guys, we got the box assembled. Now we just need to put stretchers in the back to be able to secure it to the wall. One thing that really helps, you wanna make sure your system is square before you go to install these. And that's one thing we've found with the Craig system is as long as you got square cuts, when it pulls together with those screws, it locks down nice and square. All of our cabinet boxes we've built so far have been perfect. They're working out great. Okay, when you go to measure for your stretchers, the way we do it, since we have pre-finished cabinets on the inside and painted on the outside, I'm gonna put the painted side to the inside for dad to mark. That way we don't leave a marker of any kind on our finished product on the inside. You wanna set it down. I've got the cabinet laid on its side here. Set it down on the inside and slide it as far back towards the back as you can so that you're getting as square a cut as possible. Square it up to the side and the top here. And then dad is gonna reach inside and mark this. Okay, once that's marked, we'll do the same for the bottom. We'll get them cut to length and get them installed. So in our stretchers, as you can see, we've done two holes going into each side. Additionally, we did three equidistantly spaced going in the top and bottom. They're the same, just the top stretcher is wider than the bottom. Putting the pocket screws in like we did with the stretchers really helps make things much more solid and rigid, really locks together well. Yeah, it keeps it from racking back and forth. Yeah, all we like now is putting on the backer panel and then the face frames. We're gonna do backer panels on all of our cabinets at once. That way we make the most use of our backboard at once and same with face frames. So this box is complete, and now we're just about done building boxes. We just got to start ripping quarter-inch plywood. Yep, fun stuff. You know it. I'm ready to put these cabinets together, get some face frames on them, get them painted, and get them in the house. <laughs> Me too. It's going to be nice. Yep. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick build video. wasn't too quick, but we hope you enjoyed it anyway. Yep. <laughs> and check back soon. We're going to have a lot more coming with this kitchen remodel. See you next time. Have a good one, guys.